Okay, in today's video, we're gonna to talk to you all about our big move. Hey guys, if you, uh, if you haven't been following along this channel, you're new to this channel, uh, we are two rebels off grid. Our two rebels are with us. We're taking you guys through a journey of us going from the suburbs to rural Arizona and going to go off grid. So stay tuned. And we have a very interesting video for you today. Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to take you on a tour of our of our house here in the Denver metro area that we're getting ready to sell. We've lived here for 10 years and we're basically extricating ourselves from the house. <laughs> we just had so much stuff and we don't have a big house. It's 1,269 square feet, three bedroom, two bathroom, pretty standard 50s house. And it's just mind blowing how much stuff we just keep coming across. And so we've been working our rear ends off, cleaning things, getting things organized and donating a ton of stuff or selling stuff or getting rid of so many things. So it's been a huge process. And at the same time, our 23 year old also moved out and he actually also moved to Arizona last weekend. So it's been absolutely insane here and we're really exhausted, but we wanted to do a quick tour of the house just so you can see basically what we're leaving behind. And so you can kind of see where we're at. So here we are in one of our filming studios, which is actually our dining room. And as you can see, it's, it's a bit of a mess. It's kind of chaotic right now. We actually had this all cleaned up yesterday when we had the photographer over for the pictures to list the house in the MLS. And so it kind of is a disaster zone right now, but it's, it's going to all get picked up tomorrow and we're going to be vacating. So this is our dining room. So next we're going to head this direction into the kitchen and that's where I filmed a couple of my cooking videos and I won't be filming any more cooking videos in there, but we'll be filming some in our RV once we make the move and um, get a little bit more organized. So follow me. So this is our kitchen. And when we moved into this kitchen, it did not look like this. We actually remodeled it. Um, we had replaced the counters and we did the tile backsplash. The year that I bought the house, every appliance died. So all these appliances are fairly new and we've had many dirty good times dishes. in this kitchen. Dirty dishes. Oh yeah, dirty dishes, yeah. You this just... is stuff you don't see on the other channels, guys. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of reality. censored out. Yep, it's our reality right now. We're working on getting the fridge cleaned out and it doesn't normally look like this, but uh, we're getting through it. Show them the one last studio room that we've been shooting in. This okay. is some of our earlier videos were in this room. Yeah, so this is our, I don't know, I call it the office room. It's a weird little middle room that's in the middle of our house. That, it's also our laundry room. <laughs> yeah, it's, all, it's also our laundry room but we've shot some videos in here. Um, this is actually some furniture that I've painted. I refurbish and paint furniture on the side. I've done that for quite a while. And I did this piece that used to just be that old brown oak color. And then I did this 110 year old desk that I absolutely love, but I'm gonna be selling these pieces when we move just because we don't wanna store things and we just kinda of wanna start fresh. Yeah, and this is probably a business carry we'll get back into once we get our homestead built, uh, yeah. refurbishing furniture. But this is where the editing magic happens right here. <laughs> All right, we're going to head outside and show you a place that I don't think, right, other than just one video, I think we've showed the backyard. Um, we're going to give you a short tour of some of the food forests when it's in dormancy period and maybe the chicken coop and a couple other things. All right, so let's go check out the backyard. Da, 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 da. All right, so we did film one video out here, right there, doing the soil test videos, but 
This is basically a food forest in the making. If we were to live here another 10 years, I think that it would be lush as all heck. But what you're seeing here is what we've done in about eight years time. And we'll just give you a walkabout and show you, like Carrie said, what we're leaving behind. But, you know, I truly believe that, you know, if you show to God that you'll give a lot of effort into the little things he gives you, he's going to open up bigger doors for you. Let him work his magic. But, uh, so 40 acres from an eighth of an acre is definitely a blessing, so... All right, so I'm gonna try to stay close to the camera because uh, we don't have our mics. Our mics aren't working right now. So we're gonna come over here. I'm just gonna show you a tree. This is a Nemegard apricot tree. So this seems to be working here in Colorado. Um, over here is a contender peach. And behind it is a reliance peach. And down here is the five varieties of Colorado cactus that I've accumulated. Maybe not in legal ways, but uh, I took a pad here and there, and then we've reproduced some here in the in the garden. So yeah, yeah. And the uh, dog, the dogs have learned to avoid that area. Yeah, we got <laughs> wild goji berry, or what you call them in Arizona, is wolfberry, that are popping up here. Um, mm -hmm. Over here we have a bamboo. Over in this closet we have my favorite bam uh, baby banana. He's staying frost free in here. That's where he's living for right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, over here we put in a raised bed like two, three years ago and that's a Hugo Mound raised bed. So there's actually logs and debris underneath there and then wood chips piled on top, manures, azomite, uh, um, minerals, whatever. We, it's all in there. So that's ready for the planting. Uh, we can do our annual crops in there if you like. But uh, let's go over here. And this is was a Pakistani mulberry. It's a Pakistani mulberry that couldn't survive our zone 6b temperatures here because of the pakistani mulberries like zone 8 plus so is what's happening here is it keeps dying back every year and a white mulberry rootstock is what keeps coming up so so hmm. it's gonna grow it's gonna like i said this is the dormant time it's spring but things are starting to green up but there uh there's a lot of growth that needs to still happen um over here we have our water catchment. We plan on doing this in a massive scale in Arizona, but not with water barrels, more or less uh, 19,000 cubic gallons of cisterns. Uh, we have cuttings here that I take every year and replant them in the food forest. We have a nectarine growing here in this. Um, it's a basically a, a water ditch that collects from the rain barrel. What spills over collects in here and you can plant out in here and this will continue to, um, the water sinks in here and whatever's planted in there will get plenty of water here in Colorado. But basically what you're looking at here is some Hugel mounds. Everything that's above ground is a Hugel mound. Everything else is a irrigation ditch for accumulating water or a water sink, whatever you want to call it. But here is our chicken coop, obviously from the outside. We built the original chicken coop like nine years ago, mm -hmm. and we've added additions and upgrades and stuff to make it better for us. Um, over here, the in flower is a plum, and we'll have to put it in the description because I always forget the name of that plum. <laughs> current. Here's the plum. Red current. Our geodesic dome was right there. I had to remove it for the moving process because uh, it was only half built. So we took it, we disassembled it and we're gonna bring it down to Arizona and probably pop it up as a, maybe a temporary chicken coop or something like that. Mm. This is a Macintosh apple. This is a toka plum. 
That is a Santa Rosa plum. We have alicampane growing in this other irrigation ditch. If you can film this, this shows all three sinks here. So the water comes off the roof. The water comes off the roof, it sheds down, goes in this, fills it up, floods over here, spills over, goes in here, same thing here. And uh, if I had another five years, I would have continued this throughout the yard. Yeah. All right, so here we go with the chicken coop. So this is our deluxe chicken coop. Our chickens are very spoiled, but they give us lots of wonderful eggs. So I'm gonna carefully open this. They like to get out and free range, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them in the coop. <laughs> and Carrie painted that door just like the furniture she did know. inside. I did an yeah. ombre, is what that's called. So darker to lighter. Pretty um, cool. Yeah. So this is our chicken coop. Chickens are super easy to keep if you've ever thought about having chickens. But one thing you need to think about is they are prey, not predators. So you definitely want to make sure that you have them very secure. So you can see, Doug can zoom in. We used hardware cloth when we built this and we actually buried the hardware cloth um, a few feet down and then underneath so that things couldn't dig under and get to them because we do have raccoons and skunks that will try to go after your chickens. So it was important to us to keep them safe. So they've got little roosting spots in here. And then of course we have a heated water for them because it does get cold here in the winter. And um, they're very comfortable in here. So they have this nice area. We also do let them out to range around in the yard when we're okay with them digging it up because they do like to dig for grubs and bugs and things like that. So having chickens has been great. We don't wanna have to catch chickens right now. I just gave them some cracked corn. They like that and it's good for the colder months. It puts some meat on them and helps them make better eggs, I think. All right, so obviously there's a lot of brickwork here in that. Uh, in Arizona, we plan on doing doing something like this. Everything here will definitely is like a micro scale compared to what we plan on doing. Um, probably won't be putting in ponds that much, but uh, anybody that's familiar with Shuggy Ban, which is burning of the wood, right? This is our original garden this whole trellis here. So this was our original garden for the first like four years. So this was our original garden. It was this the is, original garden enclosure. Yeah, it was the framework to our square garden, above ground garden that we just went and bought Home Depot soil and filled it in. It was painted white with a nice little fence around it. And after about four years, we started discovering permaculture and stuff. So we dismantled it and I didn't want to throw the wood away. So we shuggy banned it, which is burning the wood. And we erected it as this trellis, which is kind of an interesting shape. It's like a kite basically. And it's been in, it's withheld like 60 mile per hour winds and it's not gone down. So if it hasn't gone down by its own, I'm not taking it down unless the new buyers want me to take it down. But this is a bridge obviously stone bridge it weighs about 500 pounds but got some steps coming down this is a bench that i made and i'm putting out a video shortly on how to make this thing how i made it um but you'll have i won't talk much about that because i'm going to put out a whole video on that but other than that um this used to be a pond this whole area i had to fill that back in to sell the house uh, so we got a lot of empty space here that used to have trees and stuff. At one time we had over 20 trees in here and the ones that are around still are just the ones that survived Colorado's dyslectic weather. Um, we get real issues with our springs here. They're hit or miss. You get hail storms that come in when everything goes to flower so you don't get fruit. And uh, it's just, it takes some expertise to garden here. You gotta really uh, just plan everything out and hope for the best. 
but uh here it's uh we got all of our trails in and everything the soil here has been built up over many many years of wood chips and everything else i mentioned already but guys we just wanted to show you what we have or had going on here this is grandma and grandpa and they were the canopy trees or the nursery trees for all the baby trees that are under here and still are they still protect them a little bit from everything but uh usually every year we buy on amazon some ground cover seeds and we cover everything that you see here that's with wood chips with green and that enables food or fodder for the chickens to eat and it also increases the bio health of the soil so uh, this year because we're selling the house we decided not to lay down the seed um, and we had some pretty cold weather anyways it would have uh, inhibited that growth but uh yeah and we grow tons of vegetables we've done lots of different herbs and tomatoes and um, squash do great here we've had great luck growing squashes um, just you can pretty much grow anything you just have to be mindful about not planting it until after mother's day all right so we kind of concluded this tour um we have we're basically leaving the house tomorrow night we're going to be staying in a camper until the house sells and closes which could be a couple months so upcoming videos what do you see our videos being like in the next month or two? Well, we're going to be living in our trailer, so we're going to be showing you some stuff in there. We're going to plan on doing some cooking videos. It's a lot smaller space, so we're going to be getting creative with that. Um, we're also going to be talking more about the plans for the homestead and for the property and what we're going to be doing. We're actually swapping out our RV toilet for a composting toilet. And we're actually hoping to do that in the next couple of days. Doug has the next three days off of work and we're gonna be leaving the house and going to the campground. So Doug's thinking that he might have time to go ahead and swap those out. And if we do, we're gonna do a video for you to show you what the process is. Yeah, so besides uh, trailer, camper videos, I mean, we're gonna show you how it's all set up, how we, uh, take it out of winter winterizing and we're also going as soon as we sell this house and stuff we're going to be traveling for two weeks so yeah so we are we're going to take we've just been going so hard lately we're going to take some time and just do a road trip and we'll show you some of the footage from that because we plan on doing some hiking with the dogs and um kind of getting settled into living in an rv because it's going to be it's going to be a bit of a change for us so yeah and i still haven't quit my job i'm really waiting to push that button when we sell the house you know i don't want to be just sitting around a camper all day when i could be making money still you know i'm procrastinating i know and uh <laughs> yeah it's uh we're our life's about change big time i'm i'm sure a lot of some of you might have been thinking well these guys are just shooting videos about nothing they know about and they're never gonna you know uh go about and do it actually but you know what we've made the first step this is the big one they say that there's like three major stress levels in life that will really kick you in the in the rear and that's you know divorce death and moving or changing jobs right well we're going through like two of those right now mm -hmm. and uh so our stress levels are above the roof but you know no great no no courage no guts no glory right <laughs> yep we're taking pulling the trigger yeah so uh expect some different videos from us upcoming we're not going to be just sitting in our house so shooting videos so that's one <laughs> step up uh <laughs> But yeah, guys, uh, stick around. I think we're going to conclude this video. Uh, you got anything else to say? Nope. All right, guys. Well, have a good day, and we'll see you.